Lesson 59, The Joy of Repentance. In today's lesson, we see how the scribes and Pharisees are upset with Jesus for receiving sinners and eating with them. Jesus uses three parables to teach them about the joy of true repentance. These proud religious men needed to understand that God delights to save sinners, and that means searching for them as one would search for something they have lost and that is very important to them. The Pharisees and scribes complained to Jesus when they saw him eating with sinners. They thought that they were so much better than these sinners and could not understand how Jesus, a teacher of God's word, would bother spending his time with these who they thought were not worthy of his time. However, Jesus will point out how very wrong they were in their attitude toward these sinners. Jesus uses three parables about lost things that were found and the joy that results. We all know that if we lose something that is important to us, like our money or property, we will be anxious to find it, and when we do, we are very happy about regaining what we have lost. Jesus wants his listeners to understand that God has lost something, and that is these sinners, and he wants to reclaim them for himself and find joy in them. The first parable is about 100 sheep, but one of them is lost. We are told that the shepherd will leave the 99 sheep and go to find the one sheep that is lost. He is not content even if one is missing, even if he still has so many. The lesson of this parable is that even though the flock is large, the shepherd is not willing that even one should perish. That is how the Lord thinks about you. He does not want you to be lost and will not be content if all are found and saved, but you are lost. He will search for you as a lost sheep and desires to bring you safely home into his sheepfold. When the shepherd found his lost sheep, we are told that he invited his friends to rejoice with him. His joy was something so great that he could not keep it to himself, but wanted others to hear the good news. This is often what happens when someone becomes a Christian. They cannot contain their joy, and they are compelled to tell others the good news of salvation. Jesus said that in heaven there is also joy when one sinner repents. The second parable is similar to emphasize the same point. This time a woman who had ten coins lost one, and searched diligently sweeping all around until she found it. Just like the shepherd, she too calls her neighbors to come and rejoice with her over the coin she lost and has now found. The shepherd was not content to accept a 1% loss in his flock, and the woman was not content to lose 10% of her money either. Jesus again says that in heaven there is joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repents. If a shepherd can rejoice over one sheep that is found, and a woman can rejoice over one coin found because of what they value, then surely God can rejoice over one sinner who repents because every person is of great value to God. The final parable is the most famous story of the prodigal son. This time the illustration is more personal and vivid about how God thinks about wayward sinners. The son, as we know, took his father's inheritance and wasted it on riotous living. He was selfish, sinful, and did not honor his father. He certainly deserves God's judgment and his father's wrath. However, we are astonished as Jesus relates to us how the repentant son returns home to his father, perhaps expecting the father's anger and disgust, and yet he is met with love and celebration. What an amazing story of grace and forgiveness. How wonderful that the father should so love his wayward son that he was willing to accept him back as his beloved son and to celebrate his return with much joy and honor. This story helps us to see the heart of God towards sinners. God loves us so very much, and he wants all of us to come home to heaven and enjoy his good house of rich blessings forever and ever. 
We, like the prodigal, have wandered away and pursued a life of sin, and God, in love, calls us back home to himself. In this lovely story in the Bible, we notice that the father saw his son coming when he was still a great distance away. This tells us that he was looking and longing for his son to return home, and looking daily upon the horizon with the greatest hope that his son would return to him. Such is the heart of God towards you, my friend. God is looking for you and longing for you to return to him. Oh, how he loves you and wants to bless you in heaven forever. We also notice in this story that the son had to make his own choice to return. No one forced him to repent and return home. He first had to come to his senses and realize how wicked he had been. He had to acknowledge what a terrible sinner he had been. As soon as he set his heart towards his father's home, his acceptance was awaiting him. Before we leave this wonderful lesson of the prodigal, we must think about the older son. He was upset that the father had received this wicked son with honor and celebration. The father had to plead with his older son to understand the great work that had been done in the heart of the prodigal son. He once was dead, but now is alive. He was lost, but now is found. And so it was right to be happy and rejoice. God's wonderful grace is extended to everyone because he loves us all so much. I hope if you are like that prodigal son, you will admit your sin to God and return to him today, and the angels will rejoice over you. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Luke chapter 15, verse 32.